Scott of New Birth Ministries Church Online. You can call me Reverend Essie from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, wishing you victory, Yeshua, love, joy, peace, wit, mercy, wealth, success, patience, virtue, grace, money, health, ruach, wisdom, support, positivity, abundance, greatness, prosperity, and Yahweh. Hallelujah. Is God good or what? He woke us up this morning. Amen. Every morning you wake up, you got to thank God for what he has done for us. Amen. Church Online with me, Reverend Essie, every Sunday at 10 a.m. is for those who cannot attend the usual brick and mortar service, who don't want to leave their church, but need to hear the word momentarily for various reasons, such as sick and shut in, transportation troubles, and so forth. Know that we are praying for you and for God to send you favor quickly. Also, remember that troubles don't last always. Amen. You have the victory. Father God, I come to you today thanking thanking you for another day, for being our God, being God all by yourself, taking care of all of us. And Father God, I especially lift up to you today the veterans. Today's Veterans Day 2018. And I lift up all the veterans to you today, no matter how they served, how long they served. The fact is they did serve. And we lift them up to you today, praying for them, for their protection, for them to have favor uh, here in the United States and abroad, to have favor with whatever they need, to be supplied with whatever they need, for being the warriors for our country. We lift them up. Those that got their limbs or got their bodies somehow ruined in uh, or disfigured, in war, fighting for peace and protection of this country. We're lifting them up to you, hoping to hear testimonies, Father God, of healings, miraculous healings that lets them know you love them and you are still in the healing business. That's not just for veterans, but people worldwide. Let people know that you are still in the healing business, Father God. And we thank you for Jesus, sending Jesus to us, covering us with your blood cover this session this morning on this radio show with your blood and everybody that's listening to this, no matter how short, how long they listen, cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ and give them protection. And we know, Father, that you fight our battles. We are going to give everything to you. It's all about trusting you. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about fear today, Father God. Use me, Holy Spirit, to deliver the words that you want someone somewhere to hear so that they will come to Jesus Christ and fear no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up all the prayer requests that we receive. We lift up all the ministries that are ministering for the kingdom of heaven, (laughs) the most high God. Hallelujah. We lift them all up. The, the, the especially the pastors, the leaders, we lift them up, leaders around this world, uh, worldly governments, uh, the government of the United States, we, we lift them up, our leaders here in, in the United States, we lift them up uh, to you, Father God, leaders all around the world. You said in your word that people mourn when the leadership is not good, and, and, and that's not good. Mourning and, and people being discomforted is not a, a good sign of a good leader. So, Father God, I give you each and every country, all the leaders, so that you can, so that you can open up their hearts to you to serve you. Hallelujah. Thank you for using me, Lord. Bless my family. Bless all of our families, friends, loved ones, and ministries, jobs, finances, homes, everything, Father God, because we are children of the Most High God who owns everything. And you even send your word, oh, no man, no thing. So we're going to trust in you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all about trust. Amen. We're going to be talking about today, uh, it, the, the title is Fear Stopping Your Progress. Is fear stopping your progress that God intended for you to have? Okay, that the enemy keeps trying to tell you that you don't deserve. <laughs> amen. He's busy. He'll try. He'll he'll wipe it. If you don't stay uh, uh, plugged into the word of God, listening to the word of God, reading the word of God, the enemy will steal your blessings right away from you. Don't allow fear to stop you from being victorious. God intended for you to be victorious. 
fear of confrontation, fear of praying, fear of leading. There is a reason that Jesus said 365 times in the Bible, do not fear. That averages out, as, as, as scholars say, to once a day. Do not fear. So God is serious, just like when he says verily, verily. When he says something twice, that means he's serious about this. He wants you to listen up. Okay, 365 times in the Bible, scholars say, fear not is in there. Do not fear. Amen? Second uh, Timothy 1.7, if you want to write these down, Second Timothy 1.7, and it even tells you, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So if you are experiencing any type of fear, if fear is rendering you motionless, move, that you, can't, you can't move and do things in your life that you would normally do or want, that, that things that you want to do that you know are good for you, that's not God. It's a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Amen? God has not given us the spirit of fear. But watch this. He gives you what? Power. And he gives you love. And a sound mind, not a divided, divisive mind, but a sound mind. Amen. There's a couple types of fear I'd like to discuss today, like a kind of like the good cop, bad cop uh, factor. <laughs> Amen. A good fear and bad fear. There is good fear and bad fear. Okay. One is confrontational fear, which uh, is like someone or something catches you off guard. Okay. Like Freddy Cat, as they say or any type of confrontation, have you ever had someone catch you off guard, okay, and they confront you about something that you are not ready to handle? Okay, that is a fear. The, the feeling that you get then is a fear. Amen? Tells us to be encouraged. The root word of the word encouraged is what? Courage. And if you look in 1 Samuel, I love this scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, it says that, let, let's go to 1 Samuel. For, you can write these down um, if, you are, if you have a notebook with you. Chapter 30, verse 6. Okay, and it says, I'll start at 5, and David's two wives were taken captive. Okay, all these things were happening to David. The people were lifting up their voice against him, and they were weeping, okay, because the enemy came in and just swiped out everybody. And verse 6 says, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And I'm telling you today, sometimes when you feel bad, it seems like nobody's on your side, nothing goes right. Instead of complaining about it, being grumpy, okay, and complaining and, and taking it out on the Lord, you should encourage yourself. Use the Lord's word. You trust him, crack open that Bible and start studying and repeat the, the Lord's words to yourself. Repeat them out loud so much that you will hear yourself. Let your heart hear what your mind and your mouth is saying. Amen? Encourage yourself. Have courage. If you're afraid to go out and speak somewhere, okay, you feel like God's calling you to speak or someone asks you to come speak on something that they know you're good at, okay, don't be afraid to do it. Encourage yourself. If it, hey, if you are nervous when you're getting ready to go somewhere and speak, play, or sing, whatever it is that you do, do, if you're afraid, do it afraid. Do it scared. That's when God can use you. That's whenever you're at the end of yourself and you allow him to begin to use you, and you would be surprised how that comes out. Amen? Because it's not you. It's not your flesh. When you get to that point, you need God. God will step in. Amen? Amen. And then there is the good fear. <laughs> Okay, the fear of God, having respect for our creator, and simply knowing your place. Knowing our place in this life. Amen? Knowing not to give anyone or anything more respect than you give God. That is wisdom. 
we have to be very, very careful of creating little G's in our lives, little gods. You, know, you can make your children gods. You can make your job God. You can make a certain person, your husband, your wife, your boss or whoever. You could make a leader of this nation or churches or whatever, pastors. We have to be very, very careful setting people up uh, on, on pedestals, okay? God is the greatest, the highest to be feared and worshipped and praised. Amen? That is the beginning of wisdom. You know, uh, nowadays people have no fear of anything. Well, so they claim. Okay, dare, what do they call them, daredevils? There's always ones wanting to jump over canyons and, and dive deep down into rivers and, and they just they do crazy things, you know. And you look on the hats and the T-shirts of young people nowadays, and what do they say? No fear. They have no fear written on their hats and their T-shirts. Have you ever seen those? Amen? And then you have people who brag about having no, hey, how many times have you heard this? People have, they brag about having no filter, no fear, okay, to their conversations or, or their mouth. How many times have you heard people say, well, because you know me, because I have no filter, I'll say anything. And they're saying it like they're bragging about it, like it's an awesome feature of their personality. And it's not an awesome feature of your personality if anything comes out of your mouth. Because the Bible says a word fitly spoken, oh, my, 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 okay, okay. And then you got to watch what you're saying. Watch what comes up out of your mouth. Because, see, we have to be very, very careful of what is using us as we speak, while we are speaking. And, and God's word even says that a fool is full of words. I once knew a man, and uh, he just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. You know, we'd get in a car, go for a ride, and he talked during the whole ride. He wouldn't turn the radio on or anything. He just talked and talked and talked. And it got to the point where you ever have somebody talk so much, did you get a headache listening to them? That is, the, the Bible calls them a fool. They're just full of words. And the thing about it is he wasn't making any sense. It was gossip about whose daddy is who and who claims the child that belongs to a man or what happened back in the 50s, the 40s, and the 50s. And, oh, my goodness, he just talked, <laughs> talked and talked. I found out whose dad was who and everything else hanging with that man. I, have, I didn't, I didn't want to hear that. You know, it, 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 you've got to be careful who you hang around. Because if a, one person has those fearful uh, and, uh, and, and filterless um, characters and attitudes about them, you can become like them. You are who you hang around. Amen? Be careful. Watch, watch, because I have no filter. I have no limits. I'll say anything. Uh, we heard, okay, some, we know, right? I know some of you know people like it. Yeah, we know, you know. Oh, my, my. Well, I feel this way. You may not have any limits. You may not have a filter, and you may say anything, okay? And neither does a blind sharpshooter either. Somebody is going to get hit. Somebody is going to get hurt, okay? If you have a sharpshooter, who has, a, has his eyes blinded, okay, and he's trying to shoot and he can't see, and that's exactly what you are doing when you are acting like you have no filter, no limits. You are a blind sharpshooter, and you are hurting people with your mouth. And the Bible says, can good and bad come out of the same fountain? Can bitter and sweet come out of the same fountain? Oil and water don't mix as, what do they say? Is they say, choose your poison? I, well, not poison necessarily, but, you know, choose rightly. Put it that way. Amen? Conf confrontational fears cause one to do anything, okay, anything. And, and some of you listening to this, you might, you might do the same thing yourself, okay? Some of you out there, do you just do anything for anybody? You have that can't say no syndrome? You do anything just to keep the peace. You know what happens when you do that? You end up being a slave. You can't make up your own mind. You're just trying to please everybody. You're a man pleaser. You're trying to be pleasing everybody but the Lord. You're somebody trying to please man. 
God sitting there waiting to see when, well, hey, I'm waiting for you. He's waiting for this relation, this wonderful relationship with you, but you're so busy pleasing man. You don't have time for God. You become a slave to man. Everybody asks you to do things for them, and you're just happy-go-lucky, and you're so glad because you're all that in a bag of chips because to you. And what you don't realize is they come to you because you won't charge for your own sustenance. And you're saying, see, everybody's coming to me because I, I get it done. I, I know what I'm doing. I know how to do it and everything. No, they're, they're, they're coming to you because you are free and you do not charge them, which means your bills aren't getting paid with the talent that God gave you. When God gives us a talent, he gives us that talent for sustenance to take care of ourselves, our households, and our families. If you sing, that is your, your gold mine. Some of you are sitting on a gold mine, and you're not doing anything with it. In fact, you're giving the gold away for free. Take care of yourself. This is why people, they're not coming to you because you're all that in a bag of chips. They're coming to you because you do it for free. They'll even take your mistakes. What you don't realize is sometimes you're making mistakes when you do things for other people. They won't even complain about that because they're glad. How they say? Beggars can't be choosy. You know, so watch how you take Even Watch how you take things. Even the Apostle Paul made tents for a living, and the Apostle Paul was one of the greatest apostles in the world. He wrote most of the, most of the New Testament. He was a tent maker. He made tents for a living, and Lydia, they called her in the Bible, a maker of purple. Go to Acts, let's go to Acts 16, 14. Uh, New Testament, Acts 16, 14. I'm going to go to two of them in Acts, okay? Acts 16, 14 says, and uh, hmm. Yeah, a, and, a, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, okay, this city worshipped God, and heard us whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. She went to the events, folks. <laughs> she went, this maker of purple, okay, went to the Apostle Paul's events. She listened to him speak. Okay, now let's go to uh, Acts 18. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Achilla, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. We have this couple, married couple, Achilla and Priscilla, who actually taught leaders the word of God. And a lot of people don't know this. There are some major players in the New Testament that learn from this husband and wife couple. And verse 3 says, and because he was of the same craft, talking about the Apostle Paul, he abode with them. See, they had that in common. They made tents. And he wrought. For by their occupation, they were what? Tent makers. See? All right? So, you know, you have, don't, don't let people um, put this thing into you where you're, you have a fear um, of a displeasing man, displeasing your family. You know, some people have made some really bad decisions worrying, quote, unquote, about displeasing, someone becoming displeased with them, not happy with them. That's a, that's a disabling fear. Another type of confrontational fear is relationship abuse, folks. How many of you have experienced or know people who have a relational abuse? Once a mate finds out about the real us, we move on to another one. Keep it moving. <laughs> You know what they say? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. You know, some, some, people, some people have such a high turnover in relationships. Oh, yeah, okay. I understand it when we were younger. Okay, we had a, our, a few girlfriends or a few boyfriends or whatever. Okay, you know, there's, there's many who have. Okay. But there is a difference in these people who have relationship problems, abuse. Okay. When people find out things about us, we fear that 
fear enters us, and we're like, "Uh uh-oh, uh-oh, they learned. They're getting too close. They caught on to my drinking habits, my drug habits. Oh, my, I I didn't want this to happen. They're they're saying I'm mean. They caught on to how I get mean. They caught on to that that little character I was trying to hide, but they found him. They found her. Time to get ghost. And next thing you know, they're they're leaving that person instead of talking about it, instead of staying and talking it out, they leave because someone found out their alleged downfalls, amen, their shortcomings, so they leave. So what do you do? Wipe it off the chalkboard and write another name. Instead of rationally staying, okay, instead of rationally staying and talking it out, we leave. It's, it's like, you know, back in the day, little kids, they say, give me my bat and my ball. I'm going home. I don't want to play anymore. And this is exactly what we act like, okay, whenever. Actually, we're thinking that people are abusing us, and we're actually abusing them by not telling the truth in the first place. They shouldn't have to find out too many different things about us. When you're in love with somebody, you open the, oh, put, you put all your cards on the table. People say, well, should I tell uh, Shelly about Jeanette years ago? What, you know, me and Jeanette years ago? Well, I mean, you, if you, hey, I feel this way. You better tell it before the devil tells it because if he tells it, he's going to tell it his version and you're really going to have problems. Amen? And if Shelly really loves you, she'll listen to these things that you, not everything, okay, she don't need to know everything, but she'll, she'll know that you went through some stuff with Jeanette and she'll know what to look out for and what to help you with if she really, really loves you. Because after all, she's going to add some stuff to the list herself, you know? Or then you get the people that say, um, there's more fish in the sea. I don't have to stay there. There's more fish in the sea. And you know what I got to say to that? Okay, Jonah, don't get swallowed up. Some people are so busy running around with their relationship problems, with it, having a problem um, having relationships with people, okay, that they are literally, they don't see it, but as the years go by, their, their, their face changes, their bodies change, they become unhealthy, you know, and, and, um, and, and they're getting swallowed up. Just like Jonah, they're getting swallowed up by the fish, those new fish in the sea that they brag so much about. It's a fear. Fear causes us to run. Did David run from Goliath? No. Okay? You shouldn't run from your Goliaths either, him or his brothers. There was five of them. There was five giants. Goliath wasn't the only one, and the Bible even tells you that. That's why David had five smooth stones. David was so confident he had a stone for each giant. (laughs) He had a stone for each brother. Amen? Do you have 10, 15, or 20, just in case you missed the first time? Where's your confidence, right? Encourage yourself. Drop from 15 to 5. Kill those giants. Get victory and thank the Lord for it. Amen? Amen. Okay, how about this one? You choose to stay longer at your job, although you aren't getting paid for it, in hopes that the boss will one day promote you. Okay, how many people overwork themselves? How many people overwork themselves? There's a term, and you know what I'm talking about, and I will not gonna, I'm not going to say it here, but how many people overwork themselves, fucking up to the boss, I'll say it that way, thinking that one day the boss is going to promote them. Well, watch this. Here's what they don't understand. When you have those people that are trying to be the apple of the bosses or whoever, I, okay, what they don't realize is, they are doing themselves a disservice. And the reason that I say that is, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you a jockey or a horse? Are you a jockey or a horse? And, and, and that, that, think about it. Good leaders drive. 
they aren't driven. So are you driving? Are you showing good leadership qualities by doing the things that you do? Or are you being driven like a workhorse? Who's at your whim? Who's at your, who's at your helm? Amen? You've got to be careful not to throw your pearls before swine. And, and another thing, the Lord showed me that some of you are out there following when you were destined to be a leader. Think about that. Amen? You were destined to be a leader, and you're steady following, folks. And, and some of you out there are awesome leaders. And what you're doing is you're giving away all of your thoughts. You're giving away all of your, your plans. And, and, and you give it to other people, and they're using it, and, and they're making a mint on it. And God gave you that thought. He gave you that plan, giving away your blessings. Who was that? Hezekiah, the king, that invited the, I think it was Hezekiah, king. He, he invited the enemy into, and, and, and was showing the enemy all of his, 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 his goods and, and his, his, the uniforms and their, their swords and everything. And he, would just, he was just so busy showing off, he didn't realize he was, <laughs> he was giving the enemy all of his in-house secrets. Oh, mercy. That was for somebody, for real. For, as how to say, for real, for real. Amen? Let's take a look at different fears, folks. Fear of height. How many of you have fear of height? Fear of women, which actually causes womanizers. Men treat women horribly. When you have a man that treats a woman horribly, there's something about that woman that he fears. Have fear of men, vice versa, same thing. Fear of speaking. As in, I don't know how many of you watched the Big Bang Theory on TV. It's a really cute show. It's, it's really cute. It's about the scientists, nerds. <laughs> I, I love things like that. And there's, there's an East Indian guy on there, Raj, real sweet guy. But there's a problem. Raj has a problem. He cannot talk to women unless he's drunk, unless he has, is drinking alcohol. And what does that cause? alcoholism. How many people cannot talk to others unless they're drunk? You ever hear them say a drunk, well, what, how do they say a drunk will always tell the truth or something, or a drunk will always tell it? Okay, that causes alcoholism. Fear of the unknown. Uh, fear of deepness, water. Fear of space. And it, watch this, fear of money. So, so many people, look, I, I don't know how many times more I could see this going across people's timelines, okay, online that says um, money is the root of all evil. That's, that is a lie, and it, it, I'm telling you, it's a lie of the devil. Money is not the root of all evil. The Bible says money answers all things. If they go back and read the scripture correctly, it says the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. I don't love money. I love the maker that gave it to me. <laughs> right? And you keep loving him. He'll make sure you keep, he keeps giving it. You, 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 keep, you have everything that you need. Amen? Loving money, uh, I mean fear of money, ends up causing you to suffer lack. There are many, many people who suffer lack because of this money issue. They're so busy hearing money is the root of all evil that they're afraid to go out and make a penny. And another thing, too, did you ever notice that the people who already have money, think about that. I want you to think about this. I noticed it. I don't know if anybody else has. Did you ever notice that the people who already have money are the first ones to try to tell you you shouldn't have it? The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is really well. all you see. It goes across your town. If you get on Facebook or whatever, Instagram or whatever, you get or LinkedIn, you get on those programs, and all you see is the love. You know, money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil, and that they got money in the bank, but they see you trying to get money. Maybe in, some of you are out there using um, uh, GoFundMe or something, which is I think I think it's an awesome idea that God says you have not because you ask not, and He also says you have not because you ask amiss. And did you ever, did you ever uh, some of you out there ever try to use a GoFundMe account? And right after you put the GoFundMe account on for help with something like a funeral, uh, a loved one died or something, or a house burned down or something, hey, whatever, whatever it is. 
And did you ever notice right after you put that link on there, your friends come on and say things like, uh, money's the root of all evil. People are always asking for money. You know, you, you begin to say, begin to critique you. They're trying. That's the spirit. Honey, let me tell you something, okay? That's the spirit of intimidation, all right? That's not God. They got thousands in the bank, or should I say hundreds nowadays. They got hundreds in the bank, but they don't want you to get $10, $15, $20. Don't pay any attention to that. That's fear. Amen? Fear of relationships. There's some people who only like the newness of a relationship. That's the only thing that's interesting for them, the newness of a relationship, right? Fear of going outside, antisocial factors, okay? People are antisocial because they're afraid to go outside. They don't want to see the sun. They're depressed, and the sun may make them happy. You know, they might get some vitamin D, all right? It also causes you to be like a troll living on a bridge. You get the troll syndrome, I, yeah, I knew a lady one time that stayed in the house so much. Her house was like 105 degrees. It was really, really hot, and she, had, she literally had aluminum foil on her windows. I don't know what that was about. It was really strange. Never saw anybody do it. I don't know why. She, she literally put aluminum foil on her windows. She just did not want to go out and didn't want anybody coming in. It causes you to be an introvert. Fear of gaining weight. What does that cause? Anorexia. There are some people that want to be skinny. There's, they have such a fear of gaining weight that they get sick. They get so skinny. Some have died. Fear of races. That's the fear of the unknown. Black people are afraid of white people because white people, do you know how they do? They do this, they do that. And then white people doing the same thing, fear of black people. Well, you know how those blacks are. <laughs> Wait, you know how those East Indians are, those American, American Indians, you know how them Japanese people are. Hey, we got to stop doing this, folks. That's fear. That's fear of the unknown. We all, every race has their own way of living, which is not to be feared. Well, unless, well, unless they eat people. And that's, a, <laughs> that's, a different, that's a different story, okay? Okay, fear of spirits. Now, I believe this. People who are afraid of spirits and things like that always tell them about, ooh, spooky ghosts and everything. They don't know who they are, who they are in Christ Jesus. They have no spiritual identity or no spiritual integrity for that matter. When you learn about Jesus Christ, the Lord, and his, and, and, and his word, you have no fear. Amen? Ruth didn't go back to what was familiar. If you remember the story of Ruth and Naomi, she stepped out in faith and walked into the unknown. And her courage, quote unquote, her courage brought her to her divine destiny. Do you want to walk into your divine destiny? Stop being fearful. Stop it now. Be, be stern with yourself. Work on it. Amen. Go to, go to non-fear boot camp. Put yourself in your own non-fear boot camp. Encourage yourself and say, I will not be afraid of this anymore. I watched a movie years ago, a really good movie. Um, the guy from Saturday Night Live, oh, I love the Bill, uh, Bill something. He played this movie, <laughs> and, it was, and he kept, I think it was called Pee Pee Steps. He, he, he loved this um, psychologist so much that he followed him even on his vacation. He wasn't supposed to be there, and he followed him on a vacation. And the psychologist told him, he said, just take pee-pee steps. And this is what I'm telling you today. If you have any kind of fear, just take pee-pee steps. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Take pee-pee steps, okay? And I also uh, would say uh, get a notebook or something and date every page, date and, and, and put down what you did that day that was greater or more than what you're usually used to doing. Amen? Fear of being alone, separation syndrome. And that's not only for animals, but for humans as well. Fear of being alone. I know some people who got married on purpose just because they didn't like to be by themselves. They grab anybody and get married. Just because they don't want to, and what they don't realize is the fact that they don't like them. They do not know themselves. They don't want to, for some reason, they don't want to be by themselves. Fear of driving. And that's just bad judgment of distance. That's all it is. Okay, not just the fact that the car is, what, 2,000 pounds or a ton, two, whatever. They don't know how to judge distance. Fear of entering new places. 
such as a school, church, or whatever. You know, fear of rejection, right? Hey, I'm going to go to Hebrews 13.6. I want to read this. I have it written in my notes, but I want to see what it says. Hebrews 13.6. Um, so when I'm studying, I come up with these different scriptures. Awesome. It says, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I like that. Amen. When, when the Lord is, when you know that you know that you know that the Lord is your helper, you will not fear what man can do to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. All right, um, Timothy one seven. I believe I said earlier, uh, it, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. When you fear, you're lacking power, folks. Stop fearing. It's not cute to be so shy and timid, and uh, you know, uh, like the word Timothy. Timothy's name has it, it derives from the word timid. You don't want to be shy or timid. The Apostle Paul actually had to come and straighten Pastor Timothy up, right? Okay. When, when you fear, you're lacking power, strong mental capabilities, and a lack of love. Isn't that something when you read that? It shows that you have a lack of love. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love in a sound mind. Somewhere, love is lacking in your life. You don't like white people because you don't love them. You don't like Mexicans because you don't love them. You don't like black people. Because you don't love them. There's no fear in true love. Love is perfect. First John 4.18 says, love casts out all fear. Job 28.28 says, the fear of the Lord is wisdom, the beginning of wisdom. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 41.10. We can write these down. Um, let me see. Isaiah 41.10. Try not to go too long on this. I've got to give you these scriptures, though. Fear thou not, for I am with thee, God says. He's saying this to you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yet I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God has given you his best. He said, fear not, because I'm with you. How do they say, I got you, I got this. That's what God said to you, I got this. Okay, now let's go to the same thing, Isaiah 43, actually, verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Let's go, like, what is this, Isaiah 43, 1? Isaiah 43, 1? Okay, but now, let me see. Okay, yeah. But now thus saith the Lord and created, that created thee, O Jacob, that, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Amen. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou mine. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. And through the river, they shall not overflow thee. When I walk us through the fire, they shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 10, 28. Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. Oops. Verse 28, okay. And fear not them, Jesus is speaking here, and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, fear him which is able to destroy both <laughs> soul and body. See, humans, all these people going around shooting all these people, that really upset me, all these different shootings. Uh, all of it, it just shooting in, in synagogues and churches and, and restaurants and everything. Okay, man can take your body, but he can't do nothing with your soul. But guess who can? Fear God. You better have that good fear, right? Amen? Fear the one that can take your body and your soul. 
So, okay, it all, this all boils down to trust. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? The full trust. Not well. I trust Him with a couple of my issues, but I well. If you have a but in that sentence, you don't trust God. Okay, I'm going to try to tell you this little story real quick. Um, my son um, needed me to come pick him up after work one day for a special reason. He didn't get the truck that day from his job, and um, he needed me to come pick him up one morning. Okay, my daughter came and told me about it about one o'clock in the morning or whatever, and we had to go get him around five. Okay, and um, something said. Oh, well, you know, that was Saturday. It was past Saturday, in fact. And we were supposed to get the big snow. Oh, that big snow's coming. Oh, my. You know, snow, snow, snow. And the wind was whipping. I could hear the wind whipping outside my bedroom window and everything. And, and, and I, I laid there and something tried to take over and say, oh, you know, you know how you begin to say, it, it, this would be me. Oh, this is my life. You know, this could, this, this, of course, this is going to happen, you know. And I didn't want to go that way. Because I love God and I trust God, right? So I really, I really wanted to have a good time. So what I did was I started praying. I laid there for I think about half an hour or so, and I prayed. And then I set my phone quarter to five, <laughs> you know, so to make sure I'd wake up at five o'clock. So when I got prayed, and I said, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to sit here and worry about that snow. I'm not going to sit here worrying about that sound outside because you are God over the seas. You're God over the over nature, over the animals, over the earth. You're our God. And I said, I know you're going to take care of me. And I also ask, Father, that you let the weather be nice in the morning when my daughter and I get up to go get my son from work. Okay? He does that fracking stuff or whatever, you know. And, and, and I, I gave it to God and went to sleep. I wasn't going to sit there worrying about, hey, you know, as you get older, you know, sometimes I'm one of the ones you get a little funny about driving, especially in bad weather or whatever, you know. And I, 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 I prayed, I gave it to God, and you know what? As sure as I'm on here talking to you, right after I got finished with that prayer, I noticed it was real quiet outside. The wind died down. The wind died down. I rebuked it while I was praying to the Lord, and the wind, I'm telling you, died. It was just as peaceful outside, and I went to sleep. And sure enough, I, and get, watch it. I set my clock, I think it was 5 o'clock. I set my phone for 5 o'clock. God woke me up at 10 to 5. I got up earlier than the uh, alarm was on my phone. I turned the alarm off and came downstairs, got cleaned up, came downstairs and put on some coffee real quick. Trust God. Okay? Trust God, and you will have sweet sleep. Next time the devil tells you there's something on the way, something, oh, I wait till you see what i got for you. This is going to scare you. It's going to make you real scared. You rebuke that in Jesus' name and trust God. Amen? Amen. My, my. Now, see, years ago, uh, back when I was in the Marine Corps, Semper Fi, Okay, I'd have never been able to sleep. You know, when we had that Marine Corps night watches and stuff like that, I've been worried about the weather and, and everything else. I'd have been worried. How they say worried to death. So they, they need to stop saying that. But I trust God. You trust God, and he can trust you. Okay? And, and when we came home that morning, okay, after we picked him up, he about, it was about a 45-minute drive or so, and, and when we came back home, my daughter cooked us a beautiful breakfast. We ate and had a good time, got full, and had a nice morning. Then we all went to sleep and went back to sleep for a few. You know, so trust God. Listen, okay, no matter what you're going through in life, trust God's not going to let you down. It's like you ever see a man or a woman in a swimming pool and a baby's on a diving, or, well, on the side of the pool or whatever, and they look and they, and they put their arms up and they go, come on, I got you. Daddy got you. Mommy got you. And the baby's like, hmm. They said, I got you, come on. And them saying, I got you, come on, causes that baby to trust that voice. And what happens? The kid jumps. And the father and the mother kisses him and bobs him up and down in the water, and they laugh and shake it off. Oh, Jesus. And this is what your God wants to do to you. He has his arms out right now. He's in the pool. Okay, I'm speaking spiritually, so um, if you want to see that in your mind, go ahead. And he's got his arms out, and he's saying, come on. Come on, George. I got you. Come on, Joyce. I got you. Come on, Lee. I got you. Come on, Dorothy. I got you. Just jump. Trust 
God in any matter. With your wayward child, trust God. Finances, trust God. Your marriage, your job, trust God. The weather, <laughs> trust God. Are you saved? Are you saved? If you're not saved, all you have to do is this, okay? I mean, I call it Romans Road, they call it. Romans 10, 9. And it says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You don't have to spit around and spit and jump up and down and turn red in the face and, and scream and yell. Just say this, Jesus. Forgive me of my sin. I want to start all over with you. I want to trust you for the rest of my life. Be my Savior, my guide, and my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for me. Amen. And if you just said that, let me be the second person, the second to welcome you into the body of Christ, welcome you into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, because the Bible says when people get saved, angels rejoice, and they, they're parting right now just for you. And I'm not saying that because it sounds cute. It's not a cliche. The Bible says they literally rejoice at every person that accepts the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you. This is Reverend Essie from New Birth Ministries. Um, I had a good time with you today. I hope that something that was said today, um, it helps somebody. Oh, listen, before I go, write down these scriptures too. I'll say it real quick. Uh, Deuteronomy 31.6, which says, Be strong and of good courage and fear not, nor be, and neither be afraid. Deuteronomy 31.7, called unto Joshua. Uh, Deuteronomy 31.23, um, it says, and he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge, and then went on. Uh, Joshua 1, 6, be strong and of good courage. Joshua 1, 9, be strong and of good courage. There it is again. Joshua 1, 18, <laughs> Joshua was a strong leader. It says, whosoever he uh, be that doth rebel against my commandments, and it goes on, you can read that later. And Joshua 10, 25, another Joshua. Joshua said to them, fear not, neither be dismayed. Two more. First Chronicles twenty two thirteen. Then thou shalt prosper if thou takest heed to, the, uh, to fulfill the statutes. And then First Chronicles twenty eight twenty. It says, and David said to Solomon his son, be strong and of good courage. And this is how I'm going to end it. Be strong, y'all. Okay? Be strong, loved one of the Most High, and be of good courage because... You are a leader, destined to be a leader, and you are victorious. But listen to this. Watch this, the end of the sentence, in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Notice I didn't say on your own. Remember also that Jesus is always Lord. Amen? To God be the glory for the things he has done.